Approximately one year ago, in the early 2024, we've discussed a somewhat bizarre discovery coming from the outskirts of our own galaxy. A discovery that you can sort of see right here, the object known as Orsa Major 3. A potentially new dwarf galaxy orbiting the Milky Way, essentially becoming one of its newest satellites. And because this was part of the Orsa Major constellation, and because this constellation already contains two other dwarf galaxies, it became known as Orsa Major 3. And for reference, here's what Orsa Major 2 looks like, and here's Orsa Major 1. And though by itself discovering a new satellite galaxy is already pretty exciting, in this case, it was even more exciting because it was barely visible. Here's roughly what it looks like if we look at all of the individual stars. And so this would actually make this what's known as an UFD, Ultra Faint Dwarf Galaxy. A type of galaxy we discussed in some of the previous videos because they have been discovered all over the place, although in this case it would also be one of the most extreme examples if confirmed. Here it only seemed to contain 60 stars, which would potentially make this literally the smallest galaxy we've ever seen anywhere. But the thing is because there were so few stars, a lot of scientists thought that maybe this is actually not a galaxy but instead some kind of a cluster and should thus have a different name. And so in the last year or so, a lot of scientists tried to basically determine exactly what this is, with one of the most recent studies potentially providing a final answer. And so let's talk about what we know about Orsa Major and what scientists discovered so far, and of course establish so exactly what is this. And well right now it technically has two separate names. Orsa Major 3 if it's a satellite galaxy, or Unions 1 if this is a cluster. And that's because based on the naming convention, we usually name galaxies differently from clusters. And so since this object was discovered by Ultraviolet Near Infrared Optical Northern Survey, also known as UNIONS, and this was the first such object discovered, it would basically be known as UNIONS 1. But in reality, currently, this is just known as UMA 3 slash U1. Just because nobody knows exactly what this is, which is why in the video last year, I basically describe this as one of the most extraordinary objects discovered near the Milky Way. You can find this video in the description. And so for the past year, researchers were basically trying to answer one single question. Is this a galaxy or a cluster? But this is not an easy question to answer because how do you even distinguish a galaxy from a cluster if they're actually kind of similar, both in size, in mass, and in shape? Well, by definition, a typical galaxy is not just a collection of stars, but is also something that contains dark matter and, usually, a very specific distribution of mass. Which is kind of what we usually detect in UDFs or ultra-diffuse galaxies, that despite not having enough stars, will still contain a lot of mass as a result of dark matter. They will also contain a lot of ancient stars, suggesting these objects existed for billions of years. But also, when it comes to the mass function, there is usually a higher concentration in the center compared to the outskirts. And for a lot of these ultra-diffuse galaxies, they usually contain thousands of times more dark matter compared to the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, one of the recently discovered dark galaxies you can learn about in the description seems to be entirely dark matter and contain practically no stars. In comparison, a typical spiral galaxy, like the Milky Way, is usually about 85% dark matter, with everything else being gas and stars. And so if this is a dwarf galaxy, it should be entirely dominated by dark matter, which was actually initially reported in a study last year. But here the challenge is once again, there's just not enough stars, so even measuring velocity dispersion is kind of challenging. In other words, measuring the amount of dark matter is also not super easy. In contrast, what if this is just a cluster, or basically a loose collection of stars without dark matter that will eventually fall apart? Well, if this is a star cluster here, it's also kind of difficult to explain why it still exists. Because previous analysis of the age of the stars revealed that this is about 11 billion years old. And because this resembles an open cluster, it should not exist at all. Mostly because it's located between galaxies, suggesting there are no nearby systems that could have created this, and because most clusters usually fall apart after just a few hundred million years. And though we do have some open clusters that lasted for a few billion years, nothing so far lasted for 11 billion years with the exception of global clusters. But as you can see here, these are usually really massive and contain millions of stars. 
And so if this is indeed some kind of a cluster, then first of all, this is the smallest and possibly the oldest cluster ever discovered. But second of all, it's also kind of mysterious because we have no idea how it survived. And this is a really tiny object, only 20 light years across, containing 60 stars with a total mass of 16 suns. In contrast, here's a simulation of the famous cluster known as Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. This is also approximately 20 light years across, but it contains a thousand stars and approximately 800 solar masses. So something here definitely doesn't add up. Because once again we have this very strange object in between galaxies and we have no idea how it's even possible. And so this was the main purpose for this new study by Scott Devlin, Holger, Baumgart and Sarah Sweet. The focus was classification of Orsa Major 3, Unions 1, trying to figure out if this is a self-gravitating star cluster or the smallest known dwarf galaxy. And though previous studies did actually suggest this was a dwarf galaxy after all, because it makes no sense how it survived for so long, here the researchers leaned toward the second explanation. And this conclusion was reached by using n-body simulations and essentially trying to figure out if such a cluster could survive for 11 billion years, assuming of course that it basically did lose stars over time. And so following the process of stellar evolution, when stars go supernova, and assuming this cluster also contains a lot of binaries, the overall conclusion was that it's extremely likely that this is actually just a cluster and not a galaxy. So basically by simulating how long it would take this cluster to break apart, they concluded that it should still be able to survive for approximately 2 to 3 billion years. And before this, it was much, much bigger. And specifically because the mass function in this case does not appear to be similar to a galaxy and seems to actually match a cluster. Here, the total mass is distributed relatively equally. With the additional calculations of velocity dispersion or the overall velocity of stars orbiting each other, possibly being explained by the fact that some of these stars are just binaries. But 11 billion years ago, this cluster was obviously much bigger, potentially containing over 7,000 stars and also being slightly bigger in size, so essentially not so different from the previously shown Pleiades cluster. But this is just a preliminary conclusion, and as the researchers in the study mentioned, we obviously need more detailed observations before any final conclusion can be reached. And once again, simply because it's just so difficult to see it, which is one of the reasons it was only discovered last year. Which means that it's going to have two names until we can figure out exactly what this is. Although one of the more unusual explanations here is that maybe this is also a type of a global cluster. Simply because its age matches the global clusters we've seen before. But if so, this would be the faintest global cluster ever seen and one containing so few stars. And because global clusters are also kind of mysterious and we still have no idea exactly how they were created, with one of the videos in the description tackling this mystery a little bit more, here this is also a potential explanation. And so essentially, even after just over a year of observations and analysis, we still have no idea exactly what this is. Just like last year, this is still an extraordinary object and something we've never seen before anywhere else. Either the smallest galaxy ever seen or the most unusual cluster we've ever detected that seems to have survived for billions of years. But whatever is happening in this case, it's most likely going to resolve a lot of different mysteries in regards to galactic formation and of course dark matter. Because whatever prevented this object from falling apart and whatever maintained its shape for billions of years, once discovered, will probably answer a lot of questions in regards to cosmology. And so in some sense, Orsa Major 3, Unions 1, is actually one of the most important discoveries in the last few years. And we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.